Hi, I'm Sitali and in this video I'll be showing you how I use Artflow to paint scales. Before I start painting on anything like scales for, or feathers, I first have to draw a base for my creature. So I'm just going to sketch out just a random dragon head here, which I actually will use for the base for all of my tutorials on scales, feathers and fur. Um, but yeah, just sketching out a dragon and then just add some colour to it and actually adding the shadow and highlights before adding the scales. So creating some form so you know what directions the scales will be heading in, heading in and um, you use you know, you can't really sort of just put them on willy-nilly without knowing um, where they're going to bend down or get bigger and smaller and that kind of thing. So it's important to start with a base before you go ahead and start putting scales on. If you've got larger back scales like this one does, then obviously I do draw those in first because they're a fairly big part of the creature uh, and they, they sort of shape the silhouette of the dragon where the smaller scales would not. Once you're done with your base, it's time to decide what kind of scales your dragon is going to have. Now with scales, there are lots and lots and lots of different ways you can go and there's no really right or wrong way since if you have a look at living creatures like snakes and lizards, they actually have all sorts of different scales. I'm going to start with my super lazy scales, which is um, basically just putting dark circles onto a light surface um, and then if you want to get fancy putting some reflection on the underside of the scales and then the top side. So um, I've got some darkness coming up from underneath. I use the same color I use for the shadow, which is a bit of purple. And then I'm just putting a bit of blue on top of those scales that's being reflected from the, the sky, the presumably the sky above. And then I get a lighter color and I just go in between the scales as the light would be hitting the flat surface in between the scales as well. And that's basically how I do my super lazy scales. I think I really enjoy doing it and I think it's really effective and you can go quite detailed with them if you want. And basically you just adjust the size for, for where these scales are located. So as they go um, to the lower part of the face, I make them smaller um, and they sort of become less circular because you know the angle of them is being changed and that kind of thing. I also use the blur tool quite a bit uh, to, to make my colouring more smooth and I blur the colours in together to, to give an overall smoother shape. Now these scales are, I'm doing around the eye are more realistic type of scale um, that uh, I did actually use reference for. So they're much closer together scales. So I just, here I'm just drawing them in and then shading them. So these ones do have a bit of a ridge to them. So there would be shadow underneath the scales. They're not flat on the surface of the creature. So I'm shading underneath, highlighting on top, um, kind of like I did with my lazy scales. Uh, but these ones don't have white, like they're not, they're very close together. So there's no space for the light to be hitting the surface in between the scales and they're quite dark in between. So it's basically like just drawing a bunch of really close rocks together on the face. Um, you just put light on the top, dark on the bottom, and there's, you know, there's a dark line in between them. When things get smaller, you don't have to have them as detailed unless you can have a very large picture. You know, if you're looking at this at 100% and you're detailing it as much as you did the smaller scales, you're just not gonna see that detail. So as you can see underneath the eyelids there, uh, for the smaller scales, I've literally just had a dark color and then painted um, some light color on top and not bothered to shade them at all. The larger scales, I do go over a bit and I put some darker lines in between them so that they look like they're more, they're raised more. And the less raised they are, the less the the less shadow you put on them because you know the less um, 3D they are, the less shadow they're going to cast from underneath them. So if you want scales that are quite flat, quite close to the surface of the creature, then you're going to have less harsh shadows. Um, but the, the more um, pronounced they are, the darker the shadows they are going to be underneath and the more um, contrast you're going to have between your light and dark shadows. Now this is my lazy lip scales. Um, you can do one of two ways. You can have a light strip and paint 
dark shapes on them or you can have a dark strip and paint white strips on them. You can also go ahead and make them more detailed. Um, as mentioned before, you can color lighter in between the scales or you can go darker in between the scales. You can add shadows underneath them so that they pop out more um, and, and that kind of thing. So just sort of following the same original principle, which is, you know, the closer it is to the skin, the less shadow, the less shape you're going to have around it. You don't use a, a dark circle around it if it's really close to the skin because it's not going to cast much of a shadow. Now, I generally only use detailed scales uh, in the key areas, that's around the face, lips, on the cheeks. For the rest of the areas, uh, unless you want to spend hours and hours on your picture, it's probably best to use simpler scales. So there's a variety of different shaped scales you can use. You can see here right now, I'm just doing some little dapply, small circular scales, and I use some sort of more elongated scales around the bends near the eyes and the nose. And you can just do any kind of shape scales you like. As, as lizards and reptiles do have lots of different types of scales and they're not always completely uniform on the creature. If you have a look at some reference pictures, you'll find that lizards especially have all sorts of different shaped scales on their bodies and they can completely change shape and style um, depending on where they're located on the creature. So you don't have to strictly stick to, stick to the same kind of scale. Now to shade these, I just got a really fuzzy brush and just went lightly over them so that they look a bit shaded. And then I'll just add a tiny bit of highlight on some of the key spots um, like where it sort of bends around and the light would be hitting on it just to sort of empathize that there are scales and not just a bunch of spots um, I just did it really quickly so just to so I don't spend too much time on scales that you're not going to be looking at all the time now for the back plate scales these ones are more like armored plating um, kind of like crocodile scales and they have a very different shape and they're like one large scale. So they're kind of shaped like this and they have this bend around the side. So they're not completely flat from the side and they need to be shaded darker in the middle of them. So they'll be light at the top and then darker in the middle and then they get light again as the scale bends out. So they are um, not, they're not just a, you know, a triangular shape. So it wouldn't just be light going to dark at the bottom or completely one flat color light um, as they, they are a sort of bent shape. Now these scales have a bit of a texture to them. So to create this texture, I'm just doing a bunch of lines. So I just get a very thin brush and I'll just get, you know, either a light color and I'll just go back and forth with lines at the top and then darker lines where I want it to be darker. And then I might blur it in a little bit um, just to make it look less harsh. And I just repeat that sort of pattern over and over again. I'll go over the edge, like the, the edge that sticks out with a lighter color to emphasize that it is separate from the scale next to it. Now I've moved on to the belly scales. Now these are uh, based on snake scales, which are one of the few reptiles that have very uniform scales. So they tend to have interlocking scales that are very similar shape and size all the way along. And most of them do have these flat, long belly scales. So they're just like long plates that then interlock into smaller scales where they meet the body. Um, and they can be very shiny. So to, to make them sort of look shiny, I sort of put this light color near the bottom, but not the very bottom, um, just sort of like a so we give it a slightly glassy effect. As the creature um, gets larger, the scales can actually stretch out and come apart from each other, which is what I've drawn at the bottom here. There's actually a gap in between the scales because the belly, the neck of the dragon has gotten larger and the scales no longer in interconnect closely together. And that gap I've just made lighter um, as, as the you know light can now get between the scales. Uh, the other way of doing belly scales would to be similar to the top scales I did, like an armoured belly. Um, so to have more like a crocodile type 
armored scales on the on the neck of the dragon if you didn't want it to be such a vulnerable looking creature now if you want to integrate more of these back scales into the rest of the dragon then crocodiles are a good reference to look at and here i'm doing some larger plated uh, crocodile scales again they have a ridge on them on the top and then they sort of bend down and then come out flat at the bottom so that's why I've painted a, a light strip down the middle of them and then it goes dark and then light again uh, and they can come in multiple shapes as well so they don't always have to be uniform um, they can be smaller scales or larger scales and I just sort of draw them to fit the flow of the dragon and then integrate them into the rest of the scales so the for this one uh, I've kind of these aren't the best examples, but basically the larger scales are transitioning into smaller scales on the dragon. So I have these very large uh, armored plating back scales and then they get to smaller um, armored plates and then transitioning into small sort of um, raised scales rather than armored plates on the dragon's neck and back. Now basically I'm just going to fill in the rest of these gaps with lazy flat scales. Um, they wouldn't be very raised anyway unless your dragon is completely covered in raised armoured uh, scales. So these ones are all going to be fairly flat. So I'm just going to use a dark colour and then add a bit of light in between the scales, um, which is my lazy scale design. Sometimes I'll do the reverse as you can see down the bottom there and around the shadows I'm actually putting light into dark so you can still see there's scales there um, and it it just sort of I know it kind of looks a little weird but I still think it's pretty effective um, and can work really well in some situations so don't be afraid of doing the reverse either uh, and I just add a little bit of highlight on some of these scales and now we're going to add a lot of highlight to the larger scales that I want to be in focus so um, this is the last stage. I just pick some scales that I, I think should, you know, would have the light hitting them the most and I want to be the sort of focal, focal point of the dragon. I am also going to shade over the top of some of these scales to dull them down a bit and make them less obvious. So I'm now putting a shading layer over the top of the scales rather than shading them individually and you can see that sort of hides some of them but you can still see them so um, I've also doing a bit of highlight around the cheeks to dull down some of the shading on the scales that just draws focus to particular places rather than having a, a rather flat looking image. And now doing some adjustments so I'm just adjusting the shadow layer I just created um, and making some adjustments to, to light and contrast as well as seeing how the dragon looks in different colors um, and I decided I like it better as this tilly sort of color. Another step you might want to do is to actually add texture to your scales so I've just grabbed my textured brush that I created myself and they're pretty easy to create I do have a tutorial on that as well um, and just added some texture in between the scales and on some key parts of the dragon, just to give a bit more interesting sort of textures to the creature itself. I am becoming more and more of a fan of texture than I have in the past. I actually think it does enhance pictures quite a bit. So I would encourage you to experiment a bit with textures as well, whether it be adding them first and then uh, coloring around them or adding them last and sort of blending them in um, just play around with it and see what it what it ends up looking like I kind of like how this I think this looks better with the texture than without especially bringing it on afterwards and just adding it to some key places if you're worried about ruining your picture then you can always have it on a separate layer and if you don't like it it means you can just delete the layer and you still have the stuff underneath it also gives you the added benefit of being able to turn it on and off and seeing which one you like best. Well, that's my scale tutorial done. I hope you found it helpful. Feel free to ask any questions below in the comments section and I might do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.